On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to install this side spool holder that pivots on an Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro. And it actually spins, it's got bearings. But is that better than the fixed mount? We'll find out on today's Film of Friday. Film of Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. This is an accessory that you can actually buy from Creality. You can get it in two different versions. You can get the side spool mount like this, or you can get one like this with a bearing but the straight metal mount. So if you like your spool up here to give you room on the side, you can still get the bearing portion. But if you like the pivoting spool holder like this, it goes on the side, you got this one. I'll put links to both of them in the description below. So I'm going to install this spinning side spool holder on this Ender 2 Pro to replace this, a fixed top mounted spool that takes the film all the way around so this should bring it in sideways and spin so it should be much better. To mount it it's a metal bracket that has two screws with T-nuts and all I need is a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench to mount it right here on the side rail. To install it's pretty easy just line up the T-nuts into the slots and then tighten the top screw until that T-nut twists and then you can tighten it up you'll see it twist in the rail and then do the bottom one and then you're all set. And now you can feed that filament straight into the extruder. I positioned it so you can remove it from the front. My Ender 2 Pro is the opposite and I hate that. Putting a side spool holder on an Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro, I've recommended that many times in previous videos. Instead of that filament coming down and around, which creates more resistance, this way it comes in straight. It's less resistance on the extruder, so it should run smoother. In fact, this Ender 2 Pro already has a side spool holder, and this thing is tuned to give me exactly 250 millimeters of filament when I tell it 250 millimeters of extrusion, so the E-steps are spot on. But that's with a fixed, non-spinning spool holder. What if I swap that out, which I can, with the bearing one? Will that be less resistance? And if so, I should see more filament come through because this is actually causing resistance. Or if it's the same, then maybe this isn't worth updating. So let's try it and see if that bearing actually makes a difference on this Ender 2 Pro. The nozzle is heated up and then I can go to the motion menu and extruder and the 10 millimeter menu and just crank it up to 250. And then this thing will start extruding. But you notice it's kind of jumpy. This is the standard non-spinning, non-bearing spool holder. And when I look from the top, I could see shifting, which will happen depending on how the spool is wound, but it seemed to be jumping more on this because nothing was spinning. And with this setup, I got the expected 250 millimeters extruded. But now let's try the roller. And you can see that this just moves smoother and it's rolling and not jumping. And even from the top, even though there's probably a little bit of shift side to side, it just seems smoother with this roller than it did on the old spool holder. And the results, two extra millimeters extruded. So I ran it again just to make sure. And sure enough, two millimeters extra extruded. So it does seem to make a difference. And just to make sure, I ran it multiple times and almost every time I got two millimeters extra. I was actually really surprised to see that much of a difference with bearing versus non-bearing. I mean, two millimeters over 250 millimeters is not huge, but if you're printing lots of filament, you know, a bigger print, that adds up pretty quick. And that can affect your flow. If you're not getting consistent filament going through, that'll affect the flow. In fact, if it's intermittent where it's, you know, jumping or resisting at points, maybe that's where we get those little blobs or get little gaps in our print that we can't figure out. It's not a clogged hot end, it's not our slicer. Maybe it's resistance in the filament coming into the extruder. So this tells me I gotta calibrate the E-steps on this Ender 3 Pro. I'll just need a ruler to do that. The first step is go into the configuration menu, advanced settings, scroll down to the E-steps, which is set to 93, and then record that. I'm going to remove the PTFE coupling and set that aside. And then I want to mark some filament just a little bit sticking out of the extruder. And now I'll go back and I'm going to move this 250 millimeters. But i got to heat it first. The firmware won't allow it to move unless it's heated, even though we got the nozzle disconnected. So I'll just go into preheat PLA hot end. And then once this thing's heated up to 200 degrees, then I can go back to the menu, to the motion, 
to the move axis, extruder, 10 millimeters, and then crank this up to 250. So it'll move 250 millimeters, at least it believes, through the extruder. It pushes out filament until it believes it hits 250 millimeters, and then I can measure it from the end to the mark, and I'm showing 243 millimeters. So if I take 250 divided by 243 times that original 93 steps per millimeter, it says I should be at 95.7. So I'll go to advanced settings, steps per millimeter, change that 93 to 95.7, and then I need to save this into the EEPROM. So once I click on that, I go to the menu, configuration menu, store settings, and now it's stored. So let's run it again and exactly 250. So this thing's calibrated. I've always felt that a side spool holder worked better for my prints than a top spool holder. It does take up more space, but I just seem to get a little better prints. Maybe it's related to what I found here. I don't know. I'll have to do more testing. But if you're interested in putting a side spool holder like this with bearings, I'll put a link to the different versions, one for the top, one for the side, in the description below. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way or just use the affiliate links in the description below. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.